Welcome to our game of Edge of Dawn. I am Brady, and with me is Jaden, and we are both programmers that uh, both helped out working on this game. The two other people that aren't with us is one of our artists, Spencer, and Trevor, who is another programmer. So Edge of Dawn is a 2D platformer, castlevania S type of game, where the goal of the game is to enemies out in every room and progress on to the next room, where eventually you will lead into a final boss versus the uh, witch herself, Luna, and you want to try to break the spell of Everending Darkness that's lasting throughout the world. So a main thing within our game is movement. We wanted the movement to feel clean and refined. And since a lot of our game revolves around the movement and the player himself, with very basic mechanics such as attacks and dashes, we felt it was very necessary to allow clean and concise movement. So with our movement, we have the ability to do perform double jumps, wall jumps, and dashes. And all over all, this puts together a really seamless experience of smoothness between the games. We're able to do build the levels around having to jump from walls to walls, having to dash to other platforms. And yeah. Um Jaden, was there anything else you wanted to add to that? Um not about the movement. Would you like me to start talking about the enemy AI? Yeah. Okay, so uh, for the walking enemies, we have just a array cast, basically, that checks that if there's a wall in front of them or below them, and basically they turn themselves around when they reach a dead end. And for the flying enemies, let me go into the next room, we have uh, A-star pathing, which is a free open source uh, code base, basically, where uh, it'll actually, the enemies follow you around, and they can path around objects and obstacles, and it's pretty seamless, I think. And we have them on a, uh, a sort of, as you can see right there, I died. Uh, we have them on a pretty good, like, uh, sorry. They have, like, a, Idle, I guess you could say, where they will just path around randomly until you get in the range of them, almost like a field of sight. And then they will start chasing you around until you kill them or get out of their field of view. And yeah, we also have later on in the game, we have a large enemy which uses the same AI as the small enemies, but they hit a lot harder and are a lot slower. Uh, so then I guess. Yeah, so um, our, our core team of three programmers, Jaden, myself, and Trevor, we each kind of had our different areas of specialties. I know um, Jaden was huge into the enemies AI and kind of just getting the enemies overall to work and stuff. I focused on the players the most, so all of the movement, and Trevor worked on the boss fights. So I know for me, my main thing was doing like camera positioning, trying to get the camera smoothing to follow the character in just kind of a nice, concise way. And then also doing some more logistics with like animations, making sure the animations play into itself nicely, kind of as we saw earlier, like the death animations, making sure the um, character, uh, like the death felt impactful. So instead of the character just collapsing to the ground, and the game restarting right away. We made it so that it landed there and he just laid down for a little bit so that it felt like the character actually died. And then the game would cause a restart, which also helps kind of lead to this feeling of like the death was impactful. And then moving on to this next room is the boss fight for the end of the first level. Yep. So if you just want to go in there. So um, this boss fight was done by Trevor. He's not with us. But um, this boss fight is concised of three different types of movements the boss can do. He can do a teleport movement. As you can see, he's teleporting from platform to platform. Uh, the wall that comes out of full of projectiles, where when the wall comes out towards you, you can dash through it, and the dash won't, you won't take any damage from it, even though the, ball, the projectiles do get destroyed. And then the final one is his normal projectile that shoots straight at you, which can just be easily dodged by jumping over it. And yeah, so this is kind of the first time you see the boss in the game, and it's kind of toned down to where you kind of just learn the basic mechanics of it. And once you go through and kill him, it will lead us on to the next area 
of our game. Okay. Now that we're in the second room, um, you'll notice something a little bit different. We decided to fully start expanding on the different types of levels we want to see and fully utilize the levels to the player's abilities. So a lot more things in the levels will require things like wall jumping versus just straight up platforming, jumping on top of each other. Another thing that we like to try to do is create divergent paths so it, the rooms don't just seem linear as like a straight on versus uh, from like one room to another, there will be more choices offered to the player playing to kind of create different paths that you can explore throughout the game. Um, also in this room, we will see the third different type of enemy. This is our big enemy. This is like our um, tank enemy. He does a lot of damage, but his attacks are very slow. And this is also the third and final enemy. If Jaden doesn't die getting over to him. Yeah, this is... <laughs> it's not an easy game. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so and as you can see here. Oh, yeah, go for yeah. it. All right, uh, here's one example of diverging paths. So a red portal is just straight to the boss fight. You want to get her done. Uh, blue portals are towards more uh, like out-of-the-way paths. They can lead to, we have shops and where you can get an upgrade, and we have a power-up over here that I can show. I believe it's in one room after this one. Yep, or it's this one. <laughs> So this right here is a power up the star shot. So now that I picked it up, I can shoot it out and it does pretty good damage. However, it's on a pretty long cooldown of five full seconds. So it's to be used against uh, very large enemies. And then so this is the first time we have two boss fights in this game and we have two wave rooms. So this is the first wave room. and it spawns enemies as the wave goes on. And basically, you just look around the room for enemies, and they spawn over time. I believe this room can have... It eventually spawns 10 flying enemies and 10 walking enemies. However, it only at a single time can have 5 alive at a time. So the player isn't completely overwhelmed without a chance to fight back. And it looks like I might die here soon. But and we have portals that appear as the as we go on. So like right here, nothing happens and there's no portal. But if I kill all of these. Well, we'll uh, <laughs> we'll just cut here until I make it back. So, and the respawns are always the uh, the checkpoints are at the beginning of each level. So now I'm back at the beginning of level two, and I don't have and I don't want to go back to the uh star shot. So instead, this time after clearing out this room, I can just go straight for the boss. Or not the boss, the wave room on this one. We can go take a different path. But to go through a portal, we need to clear out the enemy, or the waves of each enemy first. So once again, all the enemies just kind of respawn, and by dying, it forces you to fight all your way back up to the wave room where you previously were. Um, our game is more on the easier side, so we did want to punish the um, player for uh, just deaths. Kind of forces them to take their life a little more serious instead of just sprinting through the whole entire game. So now we're back to the wave room. And as you might have noticed by now, when the enemies die, sometimes they drop health pickups that actually fly into the player. And this is like the basically the form of sustainability because the walking enemies, you can sneak up behind them without getting hit and kill them before they kill you. So, and then get some health off of off of them, basically. 
And the way the enemies, the walking enemies spawn in is they'll spawn at the top of the room and they'll fall down on platforms. And the way the flying enemies spawn is that they, they can just spawn anywhere in the room. So as I showed before, there's no portal up there right now. That will clear out this room. Yeah, and this is the core gameplay of our game for the most part. Um, there are other things that we won't show, but because we want you guys to go through and actually find them and experience them yourselves. But for the most part, this is kind of the core gameplay of it, where you're fighting through rooms and you're pushing through to the boss fight rooms. And yeah, there should just... be one more flying around here. But um, yeah, so once the way room is finished, uh, the portal should spawn up and it'll allow you to move into the next room. Yes, the the wave room is a bit it's a bit long, but we wanted the the boss rooms and the uh the wave rooms to be a bit of a challenge for the player so that we wanted them to at least die at one point in their playthrough to get the feeling of like actual skill involved as they use and progress with the movement system to like jump around enemies and all that kind of stuff. Slide down walls and dash to avoid techs. Yeah. And then I think like another big thing with this game, as you can see, the portal respawns. Yep. It spawns there once it's go through, and if it goes through, it will bring them to the next level. Yep. Where, once again, we had kind of the same gameplay loop, and that's basically our game. Yep. All right, thank you for watching.